Hello everyone, welcome out on another historical explore. We're in Derbyshire. I'm with Phil, I'm with Andy, and we're joined as well by Andy's lad, Jake. What we're gonna do, we're gonna have a little walk around the village of Little Eton, where there's plenty of historical remains. We've got some old railways, some old gang roads, tramways, some old canals, some quarries, some mills, and we've also got the grave of the greatest manager England never had. So this is the Midland Main Line. It's going from Sheffield down to Derby. And there was a little known spur that came off here. Just see some remains of a bridge that went into a paper mill. It was a corn mill as well, wasn't it? It used to be a peck wash corn mill and then it was taken over and called the uh, Little Eaton Paper Mill. And that's when the siding came in to serve the, the paper mill. But of course the corn mill were much predated the railways, I think. But yeah, I think it was, yeah. So if you look back, not that I can particularly look back to the 13th century, but I read it, that there was actually a mill on that site as far back as the 13th century. Then in the 17th century, that's when it really started kicking off. Um, Peckwash became massive as a corn mill, and then eventually became a paper mill, and that's when the railway got involved. So there's that Midland Main Line. Uh, it came off here and went across a bridge. And as you can see, there's some remains there of a hella low bridge. So I guess it was probably good enough for a farmer to probably, you know, squat down and get his cows underneath there or whatever. And it went across the river Derwent into the mill. Because we're in the, the Derwent Valley Mills area, which basically goes pretty much from Derby all the way up through Belper, Milford, places like that. There's loads and loads of mills and it's actually a World Heritage Site. So there's the stonework this side. And if I go up like that, there's your track bed that goes across the river. Now if we go the other side, are there any stone remains this side, Phil? Yeah, you can just see them in nettles, look. Nettles, my least favorite word. There we go. And there's another train. It's a hella busy line, this one. Okay, so I'm walking up now onto that track bed, onto that embankment, and I'm gonna walk down towards Peckwash uh, paper mill. Now, all I can smell is sheep manure. Is it sheep manure, sheep droppings, whatever? It's pretty, it's pretty pongy, but you know, I'm dedicated to the track bed. Now, as I said a second ago, that line, that Midland line is really busy. Every three minutes a train comes flying past here. Now, it was pretty busy even back then. So in 1900, 1st of December, 1900, there was a horrific accident here. What I could decipher from different reports that I read was that basically some trains had been allowed to go through that shouldn't have been allowed to go through in terms of signaling. And I think one or two of them were going too quick. So this train that was coming from Sherland Colliery, which me and Phil have explored before, down to Derby, to Chadderston Sidings, which is now basically the site of Derby County Football Club's ground, came flying down here too fast and ended up derailing. Now, when it derailed, it damaged some of the signaling. So when the, uh, the signal box here, as there was at the time, signaled an alert, it didn't go through um, to the trains further down the line. So they kept coming. Um, and unfortunately, the driver and fireman of that train were killed in that accident, in that derailment. So there's that sheep dropping um, track bed. Now all this is, this is eroded away, but this was a bridge. Now Phil's just pointed out, you can see the stonework through the, the kind of crack in the trees there, going up into the mill. Now if I clamber down here, let's have a look. You can see there are some remains of stonework, although not a lot to be fair. And then maybe, it's hard to make it out. I don't want to stack it and fall in the river either where those duckies are there, duckies, I'm 42, where those ducks are there, 
Don't know if they're stanchions, they could well be bridge stanchions, but that's where the line went, straight across there. So we're just gonna have a walk around now to see where they diverted the water through to power this mill, because that the River Derwent is what powered this, this paper mill. Um, before I forget, there was one more interesting thing about that, that train crash, that tragedy, was actually the guard, so bear in mind the guard is right at the back of the train in, in the, the guard's van, didn't even know there'd been an accident. So when another train came along and they stopped and they were like, you know, oh my goodness, we need to try and get the driver out and the fireman out because they'd been buried under a load of, a load of rubble from this accident. Um, the guard, apparently, he was sat there going, what? What happened? He had no idea that his train had derailed and killed the driver and the fireman, which I find staggering. Okay, so here's the River Derwent. That's St. Altman's Church. Now, that came flying down here. It powered the, the mills up in Milford, the mills up in Belper, um, and then it came down here. And here, well, they built this massive dam. And look, here is what remains now. Now, a bit of the dam has been taken away, which is why the River Derwent can continue to flow. But when this was built, they obviously had to get permission from, from local authorities to be able to dam the, the Derwent. It forced all the water down there, and then it would have gone obviously over a wheel, or through a wheel, or whatever. And that's what then powered this mill. I'm pretty sure, from what I was reading, that's called a goit. Yeah. But there so was is no that why it gets the goit valley? Would that know. be why then, do you reckon? There was another water. Okay. Might be, yeah. There was another water supply going in. What do they call them? A race. Is it a race? A, wa a mill race? Steve will know about that, because he's an expert on that. But you can't see it now, it's been filled in. So another channel went in, I don't know what it served. It might have gone under the structure, because it might not just have been this, there might have been some more workings. But there's definitely another channel that came off there around the corner and went through. Whether that was kind of the original one, before they then got permission to do this one, you know, it could be, but there was definitely one, but it's been filled in now, I'm not sure about its history, but this is the prominent one, because it's been restored, the sluice has now, and uh, it's private though, we can't, yeah. we can't get to it. Yeah. So that's the, that's the one thing about this mill, it's amazing, it's been completely restored, it looks great, but it's a private house, um, since the, the mid to late 90s, I think. So obviously, do you know what I mean, someone's house, so we're not gonna be trying to break in. Um, so we're gonna have to get a look at it from the air which is fine and then we'll have a walk round jump back over the river and then we're going to hit literally and proper so a click of the fingers and we're on the other side of the river and we can see Peckwash Mill now um because obviously when we're on the other side that that bridge is long gone so let me turn you around oh, I'm being blinded here so now you're being blinded so there is the only remaining structure of this mill that big building there um now this is a, a, a public footpath but it's Kind of not the most accessible, really. I'm not sure where this goes. Should we follow it? If you go further, you want a better shot. If you just go a little bit, you'll okay. get a gap. You have to stand tall and do He just forward. wants me to walk through this, doesn't he? Now, as I said earlier, this is um this is a private residence, so obviously I keep myself, you know, distant to a certain degree. Um, but there was an internal tramway within this mill, and so, you know, short of knocking on the door, I guess, and saying, all right, mate, can I have a look in your house? Um, I don't know if that internal tramway is still there or if there's any remains of that within the within the mill complex. I think he sent me on a goose here. Yeah, yeah, so that just keeps going. But if I come up here, there you go. That's the actual mill itself. So, Peckwash Mill, scene of that train derailment that killed those, those poor blokes. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk up to something called Blue Mountain. Now it's called Blue Mountain because apparently it was covered in bluebells. Now I don't know if it still is, we'll go and have a look. And we'll have a look at some cottages um, which housed the workers for, for Peckwash Mill. But those houses were actually built originally for a quarry, Barton Quarry, which is our next destination after that. All right, there's a gauntlet here, lads. Okay. So this path was the original path that was accessed for the workers. Yeah, it was originally a row of cottages there. Yeah, you can just and they the were actually there. built for the quarry, which we're going to go and see. They were for the quarry workers. And then when the quarries ran out of steam or whatever, and then this mill was in its heyday, all the mill workers lived there. Saved them quite a lengthy walk all the way down. Put this 
quite a steep old fashioned path which we're going to go up now and it's it looks hella yeah, steep yeah slippy in winter is terrible as well oh, right. okay so we're leaving the mill behind now and we're coming up these very very steep stairs I mean the thing is and there's so many midges as well I'm going to be regretting this later when I look like a doctor dot picture um, what's crazy is you think you know these these people going back to the you know mid 1800s when they were living here um, and working at that mill. I mean, it'd be hard graft, but even just getting to work is hard graft. What have you spotted there? Well, if you've done a shift and you've had it, oh, thank God they live just there. The next minute, you see the state of these steps. Look at that. You'd never get away with it these days, would you? Oh, mate. You would be. After a shift there, you'd be pretty happy to see those houses, wouldn't you? Well, that'd keep you going, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. These are pretty steep. Oh, mate. Especially when people were shorter back in the day. They weren't as tall as you, Phil. Yeah, slippy stone and all. No balcony. <laughs> Hard as nails. I'm panting again. I'm out of breath. So the mill complex is in those trees. The railway, the Derwent. That's St Ogman's Church, which I pointed out earlier. We're actually going to end the walk there. Um, in probably about an hour or so. But these were the Blue Mountain cottages then. You can see them on old maps and on old photos. Um, these were built from about 1820 onwards. I think they were built over a period of about 20 years and they're still looking awesome now. Okay, so we're walking away now from those Blue Mountain cottages. When you come round the back to what was Barton Quarry, well, there was eight quarries actually. In, in around the, the early 1900s, there was eight quarries working in Little Eaton. Barton was, was a major one of them. Now, some of you might have heard the Barton family in terms of buses. I think a Nottinghamshire bus is called Trent Barton. Trent Barton. Well, the Barton family, by the uh, 70s and early 80s, basically were the biggest independent coach um, supplier um, in the UK for, for like coach, coach holidays and stuff like that. But they started off with this quarry that we're gonna clamber into now. Now this one, there we go, there's a sign there. So that's Rigger Quarry then, so that's not the one we're, we're looking for. We're looking for Barton, but Barton is next to it. Wow, look at the size of that. Now we're talking. Well, I've not been here before, but Phil has. So Phil's been everywhere. So in a minute, I've been warned that I'm gonna see something awesome. Now it don't look like much, Phil says, but in a minute, oh my goodness me, it drops right off down there. Okay, so this, this is, oh, hang on. Summit's going off. Okay, that looks pretty awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, mate. That's a proper bridge. So maybe that joins the two quarries then. If that one's Rigger Quarry, maybe this, this one's Barton, then yeah, maybe it joins this, them. Yeah, I thought this was originally a working quarry, but it, they have been quarried, but it might be just a way out. Oh wow, look at that. Can you get down there? You must be able yeah, to get down there. Very easily, I can, uh, I can point you in the right direction. Not very easily isn't a definitive no though, Phil, is it? No, it's not. No. Okay, right, ladies and gentlemen, don't do this at home. What I'm doing, it's stupid. I'm clambering over the side of a quarry. If my mum's watching, she'll have a go at me for this. Oh, it's kind of worth it though. Here though, where it falls away. Okay, right, I won't, I won't move from there. But there you go, look at that. That is a proper arch. How old is that, Jurek? 250. Wow, 250 years old, that's mad. Now this is known from what I could uh, find out on a quick search. It's known as the Jaws of Hell, which I'm not quite sure why it's called that. Somewhat disconcerting, but yes, the Jaws of Hell. Um, now, from what I can see, there is a path there. There's a lot of barbed wire. I think, but if I can get round, I'll try and get another view of that from a distance, because that just looks awesome. All right, we've clambered down then. Um, a few stingers on the way, but I'm thinking it might be worth it. Now the arch is just through there, so let's negotiate this bit. Are you going, Phil? Yeah, I don't know if Andy will be happy with it. It's not brilliant, Andy, you'll pay, but if you want to go for it. 
That's I'll the, that's the health and safety briefing. Test everything. So actually these these are quite good set up. That won't go, it's it's a rock. This is the bit dodgy bit. You got this Phil. Good work mate. As always I'll film myself in case I stack it because but that's the thing though, isn't it? It's the dedication to to amusing people at home. And no, that's alright, that's, that's attached that. I've got a handle. I've got a handle on it. Here we go. Right, I can see the arches. We are in the quarry. Look at that tree there. The roots clinging on for dear life. Now, where's this big reveal then? Oh, mate. Mate. Is that a boy? That is. Look how incredible that looks. Your guess earlier was what, 250 years? Yeah. 250 years old. Oh, mate. Known locally as the jaws of hell. For what reason, I don't know. But I'm gonna walk underneath it. Temperature drops big time, doesn't it, Phil? It feels almost like walking into a railway tunnel here. Um, now, of course, we're in the shade, but we're in the shade already, and the temperatures just drop massively. So, what's your theory here, Phil? Because you were um, speaking about potentially being a tramway, but. Well, we're so close to the road down there, and possible pack horse kind of path that we came down. And we're near a road, and it's got to get out of the stone house, but if you look there, there's no evidence that stone free to get down here unless there's some sort of exchange for it. I mean, if you yeah. look right, has that been built up yet? Did it come along here? It's hard to tell because they're just huge rocks as well, aren't they? It's just it's enormous. Certainly. It's a really strange... What I know the bridge is here for a reason, because the quarry doesn't have to keep the access, but it's got to be an exit and entrance to the quarry of this. I can't see where else they've got in and out. No. Let's have a look at that void then, Phil, that you spotted a second ago. Let's have a closer look at it and see what we can see, because I don't know if it's just kind of occurred naturally, or fell. Or fell. Oh, yeah, is it fell? Oh, it's fell just down. the shape of it kind of makes me think, you know, it's an arch, but I don't know, I'm not sure it is, but... But these slim stones, these aren't them from the bottom floor, these big stuff. Look at that. Leaves are filling, he's got a dentist, doesn't it? Okay, so we've come round into Little Eaton itself now. Now, obviously we've looked at the mill, which the Derwent Valley is very famous for. We've looked at the quarries, which Little Eaton is, is famous for, and all the way down to Cox Bench, and this whole area is kind of famous for quarries. But probably the most famous part of Little Eaton is probably the gang road, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Because I've done a lot more than other things, don't it, really? Yeah, so I've done a bit of a walk where I kind of looked at some of that before when I walked the, the Kilburn branch down to, down to Denby um, in a previous video. But basically, just to recap, the Little Eaton gang road was a tramway, a horse-drawn tramway that was built in 1795 and it ran from the Derby Canal which came into Little Eaton, it ran from there all the way through Kilburn, into Kilburn Colliery and into Denby Colliery and it ran all the way up until 1908 when it kind of died because the railway, the Midland Railway had built the line basically following that, that gang road um, about 50 years prior and gradually, gradually, gradually killed it. Now at the moment, I'm stood on top of that Midland Railway. Now, in that previous video where I did the, the Denby branch, I walked from Little Eaton through Kilburn and stuff, I was down there. You can see the ballast is still there. This bridge here is the Bottle Brook. Now we should be able to find, with a little bit of luck, the original bridge of that Little Eaton gang road. So there is the Bottle Brook. Now we should be, if you just see those, that stonework there, that should be, hey mate, that should be the track bed of this Little Eaton gang road. Now that, obviously, is someone's house, so I'm not gonna clamber down into someone's house. Now I'm wondering if we can get down here. There we go, I can see it from above. And if I just come to the other side, there you can see it again. Basically in someone's garden, but that is the track bed of the Little Eaton Gang Road. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna basically follow it with a kind of bit of on and off, because obviously that's someone's house. Right, I'm gonna clamber down actually before we go into uh, further into Little Eaton following this gang road, so I wanna get a better view of this. And there we go. 
you see that I'm probably stitched you there by moving the branch in front of you there's a lot of stingers here and it's pretty steep but there you go that is the bridge of Benjamin Outram's Little Eaton Gang Road or the Derby Canal Railway or Derby Canal Tramway there's loads of different names for it actually Outram's Tramway as well people have called it now basically the road has replaced it but as you can see we are way lower than the road up there so they've obviously built on top and built on top I'm gonna clamber out now part of the reason for that building up of that road might be the fact that actually this bottle brook when it's really heavy rain does flood um, pretty badly so that might be why and if I turn you around you'll see just how much higher the road is so that tramway is down there and it carried on and followed off basically where that moat was going but this has all been built up on top I'm on the pavement now just next to the main road but this was actually where that that gang road went now Phil's telling me that he's found a photo and we're gonna try and recreate that so it's amazing actually like I mean it was horse drawn but it was it was literally right in the middle of the of the village because you've got the school there the shop the pub and that's where it goes so there's the tramway going round the back of the Queen's Head now this is an old building as well, this is a, it's a butcher's now I think, but that's an old building as well. So it would have literally just gone right in between. But I'm imagining it like a railway fill, thinking like big massive noisy yeah, steam engines, yeah. but it's not, it's horse drawn, so... But I bet it was still noisy though, carrying all that coal and stuff, it would yeah. have made a racket. A lot of horses I bet. and all, there were quite, uh, six horses was it I think at a time, and a couple of drovers taking them down. It's been an amazing sight really, I'd love to you know, seeing it at first hand, although there is some pictures online, so luckily we, we, we can see some of the you know, horses being took down with the trucks. And you spotted this out of your corner of your eye as well. So here we go. There it is. That's exactly it, look. We're here. We're just there, stood there. That's looking towards Ripley, look. Okay, there's so, that's, the school, so look. there's the school. Right, so let me close in on that. There you go. Right, yeah, I, I imagine that in your brain. Yeah, we'll try and find a better quality version of that. That's basically taken from here. With the gang road going down there and you've got the school there on the right. That's awesome. Now this is where we're going to head to next. We're going to head to this very famous clock house. Now you'll see there, there's a family. There's the uh, Derby Canal and you've got the clock house. Now, um, if you've watched a previous video where I, I was in Little Eaton, I went all the way down to Kilburn and Denby. This is all horrible, massive girt, blooming, I was going to say retail buildings, but they're not retail buildings, are they? No, it's not. Industrial estate. Industrial estate, word. that's the one. I couldn't find the word then. Yeah, these are all, that's all filled in the canal now, and it's all industrial buildings. We're going to have a stomp there now, just to finish this little bit, and then we'll have a walk back, basically, to where we began. There's so much history here, I'm going to blind you. But through there, where that humps, that was a level crossing of the Midland Railway. And the Midland Railway went right through Little Eaton. As I keep mentioning in the previous video I did, the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to go all over old ground loads and loads, because if you've seen that video, you'll be like, yeah, I've seen that already, already mate. Um, so we're trying to find some different bits, but um, like the quarries and like the mill, but it, it'd be ridiculous to come to Little Eaton and talk about industry and history in Little Eaton and not, you know, go to the building with the, with the clock on it. So still following the line. There's Bottle Brook. That's right up my street, that is. And there you go, look at that. Little Eaton Smithy, so that's another really old building. Now we're going to follow it right through. Now the line was here. The gang road came through here, horse drawn. There's a really nice brewery just there to the right, actually. I need to not get tempted by that. It's just me for a minute because Jake and Phil and uh, Andy have gone to get something to eat from the co op. But, uh, but I'm obviously I'm all in on this, even though I'm just walking through an industrial estate. So here we go, about to walk round the. Uh, the gang road went through these houses here and this was, believe it or not, a canal basin. Now, you can just see the clock on that building there. This here, where these buildings are, this was the canal and you can see loads of photos of this whole area here. All the, all the horses pulling all the tubs of coal and stuff and then you've got the canal basin there, family and stuff sat outside this building. Unfortunately, you can't get any closer than that to it. Now around here, the Midland Railway went across the road and off. So 
So there's loads going off in this area and you wouldn't know. You know, if you come to Little Eaton now and you look around, like it's a really nice little village. It's a lovely village actually. Um, there's lots of modern houses as well as the old ones. But actually, if you kind of get rid of the, the modern houses, you'll see a village that was one much smaller, but also would have been much busier because the area that these modern buildings are on was actually all industry. And um, what I'll do, because I'm going to walk around there at the co-op in, in town, Munchin, so I'm going to walk around just so I can get another look at Little Eaton Railway Station, even though I've explored it already, it's always cool to look at railway stuff. And then I'll meet up with them, and, uh, and me, Andy, Phil and Jake, I'll have a walk back to basically where we started at, at that uh, peck wash mill um, at St. Oakman's Church, and in particular the churchyard, because someone's buried in there that's quite important to me and Andy. So through there, the main line, this is where the railway came off, went straight across there. See the station house is still there, but someone lives in it, so I'm not gonna be filming it. And, uh, and this bridge remains. So what I'll do is I'll put a link underneath the video um, with, the, with the links to the two videos I did coming out of Little Eaton. Um, it, was, it was around Christmas time and actually I'm going to recycle the drone footage of the, of the clock house. So if you can see some frost, it hasn't suddenly like turned into the ice age. I actually took that drone footage in December. And there you go, Station Road. Even though there's no railway station anymore, it's a clue. We've had a bit of a historical explore around Little Eaton. There's a lot hidden there that you don't even realise is there when you're driving through the village or when you're walking through the village, so it's great to unearth some of that. We've come back to pretty much close to where we started at that mill, at Peckwash Mill, and we're at something called St Altman's Church. Now here lies the body of Brian Clough, the greatest football manager, as I said at the top, the greatest football manager never to manage England. Now, me and Andy have a bit of banter between because I'm a Derby County fan and he's a Forest fan, not a Forest fan. But we can agree on this, can't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Absolute legend. Greatest football manager that's ever lived. And we've never been to his grave before, so we're going to visit this. Haters out there will say technically we're in Duffield, but we'll ignore that. It's still part of Little Eaton for the sake of this video. Brian Howard Clough. Look at that. Absolute legend of the game of football for people around the world that aren't familiar with Brian Clough. Can't imagine anyone in England who isn't familiar with him. He won a league title with Derby County. And your rabble won what? Uh, I think I think we decided that a league title wasn't enough, so we decided to win two European Cups back to back, as well as winning the league title, just mm. for the fun of it. Always got to go one better, haven't you? There we go. Rest in peace, Brian. When you die and someone writes your epitaph, what would you like them to say about you? I don't want anybody to write anything. I just want a couple of people around there when I die. Great answer. So that's us. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers, Phil, Andy. Cheers, Jake. Great to go out on a stump back in Derbyshire. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for subscribing. And also, if you've got any ideas of places you think we should be going to explore, please let us know. We're always looking for new places to go and have a butcher's hook. And we'll see you next time.